Venezuela is rejecting the latest round of U.S. sanctions imposed on eight members of the country's constitutional assembly by the Trump administration. Rechazamos absolutamente esta agresión del imperio norteamericano. The, the Venezuelan foreign minister calling those sanctions an aggression by the American empire. The Trump administration says it is a response to human rights abuses and violations of democratic norms in the country. Anti-government protests began in late March. More than 100 people have died. Join us now is Blaise Mishdal, director of national security at the Bipartisan Policy Center. Blaise, simple question here. Will the U.S. sanctions against Venezuela work? It's good to be with you, Wyatt. Uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid the answer is probably not. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, in, in any situation like this where you have standoffs between a regime that's determined to stay in power and a society that wants it gone, uh, there comes a, a, a crisis point where the regime has to decide, are we going to use violence against our own people? And once it crosses that point, as it has in Venezuela, you know, they're, they're in it to the end. If you're willing to kill mm -hmm. your own people, then not being able to travel to the United States isn't really going to affect your, your, your logic and your thinking. So yeah. I think it's important for the United States to be supporting the people of Venezuela. It's good that we're, we're criticizing the human rights abuses that are happening there, uh, but this is going to be solved between the regime and its people. Leaders of Venezuelan's opposition party say they will participate in the upcoming regional elections in a bid to try to stop the president from consolidating his power. But aren't the members of the opposition party ultimately probably going to go to jail or something bad's going to happen to them as a result of this? Most of them already are in jail. Yeah. Uh, and the move here is really uh, more about symbolism of resistance, symbolism of an alternative, symbolism of standing up for the belief in democracy than it is in the belief that they can actually win these elections or, or, or change the outcomes. But it's about not giving up. It's about standing up to the regime. Foreign ministers from 14 nations, uh, regional nations, met in Peru Tuesday in hopes of finding some sort of consensus, consensus for a response. Uh, for this crisis, do you think a regional response can help? I mean, can it actually be effective? It, it can help, and it's absolutely necessary for a couple of reasons. First of all, any time that you say Venezuela, you have to say Cuba right after it, because what's mm -hmm. happening right now uh, is being abetted by the Cuban regime, which is sending money, sending arms, sending support, and encouraging the Maduro government uh, to be resisting the, the wishes of the people the way it is. Secondly, however this plays out, sooner or later, uh, aid is going to be required for the impoverished nation of Venezuela. I mean, people literally don't have anything to eat there. Uh, it's going to take a, a response by the entire region and principally Venezuela's neighbors uh, to try to solve the situation and improve the well-being of the Venezuelan people eventually. You mentioned calling out the human rights abuses. Of course, the sanctions are there for the, U for the U.S. because of human rights abuses. What are people experiencing there? I mean, everything from extrajudicial detention, you know, the police showing up and arresting you for, for no real reason, having no due process or right of law. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I think at the very point, at this point, the very existence of people in, in Venezuela is threatened by the fact that inflation is so high, mm -hmm. uh, the import of goods is so problematic that it's, it's very hard to find food to eat. It's very hard to find the basics, whether that's flour or toothpaste or toilet paper. Um, you know, the living conditions are, are, are so poor now that it's, it's something resembling, you know, something from 300 years ago. Yeah, exactly. And not to mention lack of medicine as well, yes. all of those things. Right. Well, Blaise Mishdal, Director of National Security at the Bipartisan Policy Center, thanks so much for coming in and telling us about it. Thank you, Wyatt.